Cheers, YouTube! Joe here. Mmm. Mmm, so good. This is, um, the limited edition Milagro kit. LE16, so last year's. And uh, look at that color. My gosh. So, yeah, welcome to the channel. Welcome back, eh? Yeah, yeah, right. Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> uh, I realized it had been quite a while since I had made a winemaking video, so I thought this would be a great chance to uh, show folks that are looking to maybe try wine, you know, or getting people gifts for the holidays, uh, if you're getting like a starter wine kit or something like that, to show how a wine kit is put together. And this is just to show you how far off I am in my life. What we're making today is the limited edition 16 Grenache Cabernet. Ugh. Heavy. Anyway, I, I've had this for seven months, and uh, I just found it again. So it's been sitting with my brew stuff, um, boxed up, you know? <laughs> and so it's time to make this wine, right? Um, so this is going to be one of the more advanced wine kits that comes with grape skins. I've noticed a lot of RJ Spagnol kits now include the grape skins. Wine Experts, it's still just their premium line that, care, that has the grape skins in them. So, a little bit more expensive, a little bit more work intensive, but the results are really good. Now this wine here, the Milagro, was made, um, it's in the same LE line, so it's their limited edition line, but did not have grape skins, and it still has such a great flavor and great body to it that, um, you know, the, the, the logic behind including the wine skins is that you get more of the tannin, more of the bite, more flavor, more body, um, and that is true. I've noticed these, the kits that come with the wine, uh, or I'm sorry, the grape skins, really do have a little bit more in, you know, more in them. If uh, you've ever made a wine kit, and, or like, especially reds, obviously the whites don't have the skins included, but um, with a red wine kit, if you've ever made one, you're like, well, it was good, but it was just, it was missing something. Maybe you should try doing one of the wine kits that has the grape skins in it, just because, I mean, they have so much more oomph, you know, more body to them. Um, those wine skins really, or grape skins, I keep saying wine skins, the grape skins really do impart a little bit more tannin. Um, I've noticed that if you keep pressing them down and stuff, they actually kind of dissolve, you know, so, so all that gets included in your finished wine. It takes a lot longer for these to clear out, but time is uh, your magic ingredient with these type of wine kits. These high-end ones that have the grape skins, uh, Wine Expert recommends letting them sit for a year. So before you, before you bottle them. So, um, or you could bottle them, but then you're gonna have sediment. I've noticed with these, I let them sit forever in the carboy and uh, let them basically clear out, get that sediment out of there. Cause all that, all those skins, you know, all that particulate stuff, it takes time to settle out. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize this sanitize my spoon and we're gonna get to making a wine kit. I think I'm gonna have the camera up this time so you can kind of see what I'm doing um, and I'll try to explain it as we go through. So here we go. So I just sanitized the bucket lid and my stirring utensil. I just splashed them with some sulfite um, but it got me to thinking I uh, did not do a proper unboxing of this so thought I would show you. Here's everything that was included in the kit at the top and inside the actual kit here we've got the grape skins which come in this big beefy pack. Look at that right there. Whoop. Super thick you can see. And then of course the grape juice. So one thing you always want to check especially when you're doing these higher end kits is to make sure that you're adding the correct oak additions when you're supposed to. So I double checked. I typically don't read my directions because I've done it so many times, but I was thinking mm, I should double check this one. And these oak cubes uh, are to be added later in the process. So we will add the oak chips. We'll put the skins inside the baggie here. We'll add our bentonite and yeasts, let that ferment out, and then the oak chips are added at a later date. And then at a later date from that point would be the um, 
uh, chitosan, sorbate, and the sulfite additions to stabilize and finish the wine. So just wanted to give you a heads up if you are unfamiliar with the kits. Um, definitely read through your directions and unpack everything. Make sure you've got everything. Um, but uh, And even if you are familiar with the kits and, you d and you've done a, a lot of them, just double check on your oak additions because I, I have noticed in between different kits that is the one thing that really kind of changes is going to be those oak additions. Sometimes you add it all up front, sometimes you save some for later. So, word of the wise, read your instructions. Delicious. Mm, so, good. so, everything has been cleaned and sanitized and rinsed. So with this, I used a sulfite solution. You just splashed around on everything and then you rinse it. That's it. You also want to make sure that you sanitize your straining bag or the, you know, the, the muslin bag that you're going to put all those grape skins in. And the reason being is that this is all kinds of fiber. So you just want to make sure it's sanitized. I sanitize mine in sulfite. I let it soak in it for a little while and then I rinse the hell out of it. But I mean, you can still smell kind of that sulfite fumes coming off of it. You want to rinse it really well because sulfite will kill your yeast deader than a doornail. All right. So first step with all these kits is you take some hot water here. And I'm just, I just use straight tap. I don't boil it or all that stuff. To about there. <laughs> this is my scientific method here. And then you add your bentonite. This is a first step clarifier. It is literally a uh, very finely powdered clay. I'm not sure if you can see that in there. It's a little dark, but you'll see it. So you just blend that in. Mmm. We're literally making mud to start with. Isn't that weird? You sanitize all this stuff, you get it good to go, and then you, you make mud. <laughs> but anyway, it is a uh, it is a charged clarifier, so essentially what happens is uh, it's going to help bind with things right at the very beginning, especially the yeast. Kind of weighs them down a little bit, and so then once they're all done fermenting and the CO2 sort of dies down, um, it all settles out nicely. So bentonite is in pretty much every wine kit you will ever see. So you just give it a good mix, you get all that incorporated. And there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take my grape skins and set them aside. And I'm going to get that big bag of juice you saw in the prior uh, little clip there. And uh, for purposes of this video, I'm actually going to use their pouring mechanism just because the angle that I've got the camera is making it a little hard for me to get to this side of the bucket. But essentially what we're going to do, I'll show you on the uh, fruit skins pack here. We're going to pop the, the lid off, dump it in, rinse the bag, and continue uh, dumping the remainder of that in. Uh, the pouring top here essentially just makes it a little bit easier to hold because you essentially um, pour from the box. Um, so it kind of traps that bag in there and it makes it a little easier to handle. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm just pulling the bag up here. Pop this down and this down. <clears throat> it's not too hard to use, but sometimes the uh, angle you got like right now mine's causing me a little bit of strife. That's okay. We'll just use this part. Pop that in. There and there. Okay, so now I'm gonna take something to pop it, pop the lid off with here. Lid is up. And now basically, in it goes. I try to let it splash around a little bit to help aerate it.
But you can see these uh, higher end kits have a lot more juice in them. And so uh, you don't need nearly as much water. So here's the bag. A little bit left in there. And now I always rinse the bag to get all the good stuff that I can. You could just add straight water if you want, but... I just have always used the extra bit of water in the bag to pick up any extra juice and flavor. Just kind of shake it around a bit. And in it goes. all that in there. So now you can see the bag is pretty much spotless. So we're good there. So six gallon wine kit, of course these bigger ones are six gallon. So this bucket, that internal line right there is that six gallon mark. So I'm going to set this aside because I will knock it over. And now I'm just adding kind of lukewarm water. I'm going to rinse this off. Nice and easy. And this is, again, it's right from my tap. So. And I make a mess, of course. <laughs> That's me. But I found that I actually do a decent amount of winemaking in the uh, later fall or uh, winter time. And that's not the best for the yeast because the yeast, um, they like it really warm. But... Uh, there's fruit flies and so I prefer to make my wine at a time where I'm battling less fruit flies and we do a lot of gardening so the house can sometimes have quite a few fruit flies in there and if you get a fruit fly in it can give you an acetobacter infection which uh, will basically turn your delicious expensive wine into vinegar So that's why you always want to clean and sanitize everything. Uh, I get a lot of pushback from fresh fruit winemakers being like, well, I want to make an organic wine. I don't want to use any chemicals and stuff. And that's possible, but I mean, you have to sanitize your fruit somehow so you can heat it up, which can damage the fruit flavors, or use a little bit of sulfite, and it kills everything uh, with the sulf uh, sulfur dioxide gas. And it's so minimal, like you don't need to use a lot of it, but man, that step will help make sure you don't get vinegar. We get it all the time. My batch turned to vinegar. Well, did you sanitize it? No. Well, uh, I guess you got a lot of uh, vinegar for gifts for Christmas, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got that. Now we're going to go ahead and add our oak chips. Some people actually sanitize these. Uh, I haven't before. Um, the instructions don't really call for it. Look at those. Look at that. Pretty. But again, if you're ever uh, ever wondering about what processes to do and stuff, I mean, like, follow the directions. The you know they've spent time developing the directions for you to make it simple and relatively foolproof. So, if you're ever in question, read the directions. And if you've got a different process, like me, I don't really read them anymore because I've done so many, I don't really need to anymore. Um, but still, that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes check. Like today, I was like, those oak cubes, when do we add those? So you check it, you make sure you don't fuck it up. So, two different yeasts in this one. I'm gonna go ahead and get these incorporated. Yeast pack one. Yeast pack two. Some kits will come with two different packs. Some will come with multiple of the same. Some come with just one. Um, again, they've developed the kit to give you the result they're looking for, which should be a pretty classic, you know, true to style um, wine. So. Again, if all else fails, if you're doing a wine kit, follow the directions. Now, if you're doing it all on your own, um, you're on your own. That's the point of it, you know? You, you, do, uh, you do what is within your skill level, you know? 
I don't think most people would just hop on a motorcycle and start going with it without having some knowledge of what they're doing. And you'd be surprised how many people get into making wine or beer and have absolutely no, no freaking idea what they're doing. And then they end up screwing it up and they spend all this money and, they're and they get frustrated and stuff and when all it would take would be like watching this video or watching a fresh fruit wine video, or reading a book. You know, anyone can publish anything online. Even me, I can be full of shit sometimes, I don't know. Um, anyone can publish anything online. So I tell folks, if you've got questions, if you wanna make sure you're doing it right, read the directions with a kit, or read a book. Make sure you're educated before you start this stuff. It's not hard, but you need to know what you're doing. That's how I look at it. So I'm gonna rinse this one more time. Rinsing the uh, baggie here. Got a little bit of worn on that, I'll rinse that off too. Not that it matters, we're gonna make a mess. I guess I don't even need to do that. Okay, so here's the trickiest part of the whole thing. So we've got everything mixed in. You can see it's sitting there, it looks good. Oh, it smells delicious. Um, I'll take the bag and I'll start to open it. And I'll take it all the way down to the bottom seam. I kind of pull it open like that. So now, the trickiest part uh, with this, the best thing to do, really, is to take your scissors, sanitize them. This is sulfite, so I know it's going to be instant. And then uh, I'm going to actually set this here for the time being. Now, same thing with the bag. I'll typically sanitize. I'll, san I'll rinse it, and then I'll sanitize it, basically. Because <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to cut the bag open. And uh, you don't want a whole lot of uh, funk getting in there. So. There's really no good way to get those skins out of the bag without just cutting it open. So I'll sanitize it, I'll wipe it down, and then I'll give it a rinse. Again, you don't want the sulfite to kill your yeast. <coughs> so here we go. And, or rinse these scissors. Okay. So this is the part, if you've seen in my prior videos, that I always kind of screw up. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's always something because th these kits, because the way that they package them, the skins are never really easy to get out of the bag. Um, I've seen some folks squeegee them out of the thing. I just chop the top off and just go to town with it. Um, it that has seemed to be what works best for me. Um, but if you've got a better idea, please share it down below. Or if you better process, this is what I've always done. And it works. It's just a little messy. So as you can see, I've had sulfide on my hands too. So everything is sanitized, my hands included. Um, so yeah, so here we go. So I'll take this. Kind of wrap the baggie around it like that. Now you want to be careful because it's a really sharp baggie. You don't want to puncture your muslin bag. But I'll just pull that up. And then I kind of just start, kind of like a um, toothpaste, you know, trying to squeeze as much out of there as you can. And basically it's going to start to pop out the top. And it's almost, at this point, it's like a really, really thick, like, jam. Um, because there's still there's still uh, sugar in there. There's the, obviously the grape skins. Oh, look at that. Oh, we got lucky. Hoo -ah. Yeah, check that out. So that's the grape skins in their pack form. <laughs> Literally came out all in one go. So, so then what I'll do, I'll kind of pop it there. Tie the top off. And then we take this whole thing and we put it in. So you can see there, it's starting to come through, you know? Yeah, like I said, it's super thick. In it goes. So basically what you're gonna do now is uh, let it ferment. <laughs> let it ferment for, um, uh, it's about a week, and uh, every single day, once or twice a day, 
up there some of the, the jam that came through. Every single day you press down that grape skin pack. And what you're gonna be doing essentially is each time you're going to be uh, breaking it up a little bit. I'll typically actually at this point kind of stir the uh, grape skin pack around to try to get it to dissolve in a little bit, kind of get it breaking up. Um, I have seen some folks that will take it and kind of liquefy it beforehand. They'll actually take the grape skins and like put them in like a food processor or something. I don't think that's necessary. Um, I'll just do this and you'll start to feel it. like right now I can feel it. it's kind of bending my, my uh, paddle here. But you can see it's starting to kind of break up. You can even do this. Kind of bam, 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 bam. You want to be kind of gentle with it because it's just in a muslin bag, but at the same rate, it's uh, it's uh, pretty sturdy. So just don't just don't be silly with it. Don't 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 try to mess it up. But yeah. So basically, what's going to happen is uh, we're incorporating, you know, more of that kind of that jam, I guess, that's inside that bag. Uh, the grape skins bag. Um, we're exposing as much of the grape skin as we can. You can see it's kind of starting to round out now. Whoops! <laughs> and the uh, bag fell off the thing. Um, and what's going to happen is as it's fermenting, the yeast are kind of going to get in there. And as they're making uh, CO2 by converting the sugars into alcohol, that whole bag's going to start to float to the top. And it'll actually get really, really hard if it stays on the top for long. And that's just essentially a yeast cake. And what you want to do is you want to keep pressing that down so that way it can't... See what I mean? So it can't... Um, uh, stay up the top and possibly mold if you know if you had any sanitation issues um, or uh, you you know you want to keep breaking it up to get all those flavors out of those skins um, in in made from scratch wine making that'd be just pressing your must down because essentially you'd, you'd crack up all your grapes you'd mash them up um, you'd get them in your fermenter add your yeasts and sugars and a little bit more water um, and then every day you pop it open and you literally break open all that skin that's floating at the top and that's essentially what you're doing with the the bag here so i'm actually feeling this is pretty good pretty good indeed actually so but you can see how I kind of broke it up. Let me see if I can grab the back. See how it's no longer like that square shape, it's all rounded? Yeah, that's what we want. So, we are good to go. Now you could take a hydrometer reading at this point or a refractometer reading. I typically don't with the wine kits because I know they're gonna turn out exactly where they say they're going to. That's uh, part of why these kits are so nice. They're calibrated to make the ABV you're looking for and they're calibrated to have the flavor profile you're looking for. And so, um, that's good good enough for me. Uh, I've never had a wine kit be off in gravity or in uh, um, like flavor profile. So we'll just pop this on. There we go. And now it's time for our airlock, which I did not sanitize. So give me just one moment. Again, we're just gonna spray sanitize. This is sulfite, so it's pretty much on contact. And wine doesn't typically have the big foaming problems that beer can, but you still want it. Do your due diligence, sanitize it. If you spend the money on a good wine kit, make sure that you do it right, and you should have a great wine. In that goes. And I'm actually gonna leave this uh, right here, essentially, to do the, our fermentation. So, make sure this is down. Yep. Okay. Third piece in, second piece in, third piece on. And there we go. That is essentially how you make a wine kit. So there you go. That's basically how you start a wine kit. So now what we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna let it basically ferment for about seven days. Every day I'm gonna press that wine skin pack down and keep breaking it up just to make sure that it all gets incorporated and it all gets fermented out and we get the most out of those skins. After that point, we will remove the uh, sack of the skins and then we'll press it. We'll just basically, you sanitize the hell out of your hands and you can squeeze it or if you've got a small fruit press, you can press it, whatever works for you. I don't have a press, so I just squeeze it really well until it's pretty much dry. Um, then you let it set and continue fermenting for another week or so. And then 
is when you begin the clarifying process. So at that point, you would add um, your oak cubes, you will add your kytosan, which is a clarifier. You will add your uh, sulfite to kill off your yeast, and you've got to make sure that it's done fermenting at that point. So check your gravities two or three times, check it once, and then wait a day or two, check it again. And then as long as they stay the same, you know that it's done fermenting. So you'll add your sulfite to kill off your yeast, and then you'll add your sorbate as a preservative. It'll also help make sure that any yeast that survive can't metabolize any more sugars. So it basically stops your fermentation. These two stop your fermentation. Uh, the chitosan or whatever clarifier that comes in your wine kit is going to basically drop out any particulate. And so then what I will do is I will actually probably let this set in the carboy for at least six months. And what we're going to do during that time is every couple months I'll move it to a new carboy to leave all that nasty sediment behind. And then what I will do during that process, um, they recommend using like a wine whip or something like that to degas your wine when you add all these clarifiers and stuff because the CO2 will keep pulling things back up into suspension. You basically want to add um, your clarifiers and beat the wine to get the CO2 out so everything drops out nice and clear. Not hard at all. What I do actually though is I will use a glass carboy and I use a vacuum degasser, uh, one by Blickman. So if you've never heard of those, uh, send me an email at the shop or something and we can get you set up with one. They're not the cheapest, but they're by far the nicest to work with in my opinion. Um, I've had pluses and minuses with the whips, you know, the drill mounted degassers, and I just got tired of it and so I sprung for uh, the Blickman degasser. Uh, yeah, so then degas it, get everything incorporated, let it sit for six months or so, and um, yeah, then it's time to bottle it and let it sit for even longer. So yeah, I waited a long time on this kit. Um, like I said, I just discovered it in my, <laughs> my brewing area there. I was like, oh, I did forget to do that one. So Nikki's on me. <laughs> she was like, you need to do this now. Okay, all right. Um, especially because, I'm not sure if you uh, keep up with it, but the, the LE17 kits are currently in pre-order. So if you're looking to pick up one of these kits, check out BIYHomebrewSupply.com. We've got them right there on the front page. Um, and like I said, they're not the cheapest kit, but their quality is unsurpassed. We do them all every year. So every single kit, uh, that's pretty much our wine supply for the year. Um, trying to think, if you're looking to get started in winemaking, um, the, you saw how easy it is. It's not really hard to do these more advanced kits. Um, if you decide to opt for one of the more economical kits that don't have the grape skins, it's pretty much the same process with the exception of the grape skins and you just add more water. Basically they're more concentrated, they're around like 10 liters where this was an 18 liter kit uh, with the grape skins uh, on top of that. So a lot of stuff goes into these higher end kits. Um, you get a little bit more flavor. I found that the reds I like buying the kit that has more juice in it. White wines, I haven't really seen too, too much of a difference actually. So for me, it's um, whatever's sounding good at the time and you know, I'll just take that. So, uh, but yeah, so that's how easy it is. I highly recommend it. If you're looking to get started in winemaking, give it a go. Uh, at our shop, BIY Homebrew Supply, we also have one gallon kits. So if you're not wanting to start with a six gallon beast like this, we do have one gallon beer and wine kits, uh, both equipment and ingredient. So. Check it out, biyhomebrewsupply.com. How many times can I say that in one one uh, shot? <laughs> so, but anyways, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, definitely leave them down in the uh, section below. I am trying to get caught up. I have over a thousand messages. I kind of took a break from YouTube for a little while. I was getting a little frustrated, so I had to stop. And then I got sick and all this crap. So, so, but yeah, so. Leave comments down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And if I don't, uh, I'm sure other folks can chime in. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And please do subscribe. We do a lot of that. And if you are not aware, I do a Patreon page in conjunction with this to kind of help me pay for this stuff. And um, every little bit uh, helps. So if you want to, check it out. Patreon.com slash Terpsichorean Kit. And uh, from there, you can make a donation. Uh, I only charge my donations uh, system when I produce a video. So you're not going to be sitting there, you know, paying Joe for nothing. I'm not sitting here just, you know, soaking it in. Um, it's only when I produce a video do I actually send that out. So um, different perks, check it out. Um, thank you guys as always for watching. If you have any questions again, let me know. But it's pretty clear. I mean, any questions that I've ever had, the wine expert or RJ Spagnuolo's instructions have been perfect in answering them for me. So if you ever get lost, don't worry. 
there's got to be a resource out there, something noted for you. Pretty easy to follow though. You saw it was just that easy. I mean, when I'm not filming, I can put one of these kits together in about five minutes. So it takes no time and they're so good. They're so good. I wish though that I could buy time in a bottle for many reasons, right? If I could just buy a little bit more time and whoop, done, that'd be great. <laughs> and then whoop, I get younger. Though, supposedly wine, you know, resveratrol, anti-aging, right? Okay, I'm gonna let you go now. <laughs> Thanks for watching everyone. Cheers, 17, and we'll see you soon.